Hello again, dear students. Our presentation today deals with the synopsis or the plot summary of our novel Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. The first and best thing to start with is the following and plot summary by Course Hero. Please listen carefully and then we will continue. Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness is set in the 1890s at the height of European colonization of the African continent. In the introduction, five friends sit on a yacht waiting for the tide to change on the River Thames so they can head out to sea. Marlowe, the storyteller of the group, begins a tale by saying, and England also has been one of the dark places of the earth. His words set the dark brooding tone of the novella. He tells his friends he once signed on to pilot a boat upriver in Africa. Marlowe explains that he undertook the trip while working for a European ivory extraction operation known simply as the Company. In the rising action, the company hired Marlowe in Europe and gave him the task of picking up one of its agents in Africa, a man named Kurtz, to relieve him of his duty. Apparently, Kurtz employed questionable methods for consistently collecting more ivory than any of the other company stations. With this goal in mind, Marlowe travels to Africa. He disembarks at the coastal outer station and then travels 200 miles to the company's central station, where the river is navigable and his steamer is supposed to be waiting for him. Once there, Marlowe learns that his steamer is sunk at the bottom of the river. He meets the central station manager, who tells him that the situation is very grave at the inner station, where Kurtz is the agent and where Marlowe is meant to pilot the steamer. Marlowe's told it will take three months to repair the boat, and he concludes that the delays are intentional. Kurtz is ill, and the manager hopes he'll die before Marlowe reaches him. Marlowe overhears a conversation between the station manager and his uncle. The two exchange dark hints about Kurtz's character and behavior. Eventually, the boat is repaired, and along with the manager and pilgrims and 20 cannibals, Marlowe heads upriver. Eight miles from the inner station, the steamer is attacked by natives. Marlowe's helmsman is killed. Marlowe pitches the body overboard to avoid having it eaten by the native crew members. When they eventually meet, Kurtz tells Marlowe some of his ideas. Marlowe has read Kurtz's report, arguing that godlike whites can bring civilization to Africa. Marlowe thinks Kurtz has gone mad. Arriving at Central Station, Marlowe meets a Russian dressed in colorful, patchworked clothes that make him look like a harlequin. The Russian tells Marlowe that Kurtz often spends long periods in the jungle, staying with the native people or gathering ivory. He suggests Kurtz uses extreme methods to secure the ivory, and he says the native people adore him. Marlowe observes fence posts with severed human heads on them. When Kurtz arrives, he's on a stretcher, very ill. With mixed feelings about Kurtz, Marlowe agrees to protect his papers and his reputation once Marlowe returns to Europe. In the climax, Kurtz dies on the trip downriver. The last thing Marlowe hears him say is, the horror, the horror. In the falling action, Marlowe delivers Kurtz's report to a journalist for publication and his papers to the fiance Kurtz left behind in Europe. And in the resolution, we come to the end of Marlowe's tale and the action returns to the five friends on the yacht. The Thames is flowing under an overcast sky into the heart of an immense darkness. So, after having that blood diagram, please pay attention to the following details. Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness retells the story of Marlowe's job as an ivory transporter down the Congo. Through his journey, Marlowe develops an intense interest in investigating Kurt, an ivory procurement agent, and Marlowe is shocked upon seeing what the European traders have done to the natives. رواية كونراد Heart of Darkness تتحدث عن مارلو وعمله في نقل العاج من الكونغو. خلال رحلته، مارلو يسمع عن شخصية تدعى كيرتس ويهتم جدا بمعرفتها. طبعا كيرتس عميل مهم ومورد للعاج في الشركة. ومن خلال الرحلة مارلو يصاب بالصدمة لما يراه من معاملة مأساوية للأفارقة الناتفز من قبل التجار الأوروبيين. 
Heart of Darkness begins on the deck of the Nelly, a British ship anchored on the coast of the Thames. The anonymous narrator, the director of companies, the accountant, and Marlowe sit in silence. Marlowe begins telling the three men about a time he journeyed in a steamboat up the Congo River. For the rest of the novel, with only minor interruptions, Marlowe narrates his tale. تبدأ الرواية على سطح مركب يدعى نالي أو تدعى نالي راسية على ساحل نهر الثيمز القاص المجهول مدير الشركات المحاسب ومارلو يجلسون في صمت ثم يبدأ مارلو بسرد الأحداث للرجال عن رحلته في سفينة بخارية في نهر الكونغو مارلو يقص الأحداث إلى نهاية القصة مع بعض التدخلات الصغيرة As a young man, Marlowe desires to visit Africa and pilot a steamboat on the Congo River. After learning of the company, a large ivory trading firm working out of the Congo, Marlowe applies for and receives a post. He leaves Europe in a French steamer. At the company's outer station in the Congo, Marlowe witnesses scenes of brutality, chaos, and waste. Marlowe speaks with an accountant whose spotless dress and uptight demeanor fascinate him. Marlow first learns from the accountant of Kurtz, a remarkable agent working in the interior. Marlow leaves the outer station on a 200-mile trek across Africa and eventually reaches the company's central station, where he learns that the steamboat he is supposed to pilot up to the Congo was wrecked at the bottom of the river. Frustrated, Marlowe learns that he has to wait at the central station until his boat is repaired. Marlowe then meets the company's manager, who told him more about Kurtz. According to the manager, Kurtz is supposedly ill, and the manager feigns a great concern over Kurtz's health. Although Marlowe later suspects that the manager wrecked his steamboat on purpose to keep supplies from getting to Kurtz. After three weeks, a band of traders called the Eldorado Exploring Expedition, led by the manager's uncle, arrives. One night, as Marlowe is laying on the deck of his salvaged steamboat, he overhears the manager and his uncle talk about Kurtz. Marlowe concludes that the manager fears that Kurtz is trying to steal his job. His uncle, however, told him to have faith in the power of the jungle, to do away with cats. Marlowe's boat is finally repaired, and he leaves the central station, accompanied by the manager, some agents called the pilgrims, and a crew of cannibals, to bring relief to Kurtz. Approximately 50 miles below Kurtz's inner station, they find a hut of reeds, a wood pile, and an English book entitled An inquiry into some points of seamanship. As it crept toward Kurtz, Marlowe's steamboat is attacked by a shower of arrows. The whites fire rifles into the jungle while Marlowe tries to navigate the boat. A native helmsman is killed by a large spear and thrown overboard. Assuming that the same natives who are attacking them have already attacked the inner station, Marlowe feels disappointed now that he will never get the chance to speak to Kurtz. Marlowe reaches the inner station and notices Kurtz building through his telescope. There is no fence, but a series of posts, posts ornamented with balls that Marlowe later learns were natives' heads. A Russian trader and disciple of Kurtz, called the Harlequin by Marlowe, approaches the steamboat and tells Marlowe that Kurtz is still alive. Marlowe learns that the hut they previously saw is the Harlequins. The Harlequin speaks enthusiastically of Kurtz's wisdom, saying, This man has enlarged my mind. Marlowe learns from him that the steamboat was attacked because the natives didn't want Kurtz to be taken away. Suddenly, Marlowe sees a group of native men coming toward him, carrying Kurtz on a stretcher. Kurtz is taken inside the hut, 
where Marlowe approaches him and gives him some letters. Marlowe notices that Kurt is frail, sick, and bald. After leaving the hut, Marlowe sees a wild and gorgeous native woman approaches the steamer. The Harlequin hints to Marlowe that the woman is Kurt's mistress. At midnight, Marlowe awakens to the sound of a big drum. He inspects Kurt's cabin, only to discover that he is not there. Marlowe runs outside and finds a trail running through the grass, and realizes that Kurt is escaping by crawling away on all fours. When he comes upon Kurt, Kurt warns him to run, but Marlowe helped Kurt to his feet and carried him back to the cabin. The next day, Marlowe, his crew, and Kurt leave the inner station. As they move farther away from the inner station, Kurt's health deteriorates. At one point, the steamboat breaks down and Kurt gives Marlowe a packet of letters and a photograph for safekeeping, fearing that the manager will take them. Marlowe complies. One night after the breakdown, Marlowe approaches Kurt, who is laying in the pilot house on his stretcher, waiting for death. After trying to reassure Kurtz that he is not going to die, Marlowe hears Kurtz whisper his final words. The horror, the horror. The next day, Kurtz is buried offshore in a muddy hole. After returning to Europe, Marlowe again visits Brussels, or Brussels and finds himself unable to relate to the sheltered Europeans around him. A company official approaches Marlowe and asks for the packet of papers to which Kurtz had interest in him. Marlowe refuses, but he does give the official a copy of Kurtz's report to the Society for the Suppression of Savage Customs with Kurtz's chilling postscript, exterminate all the brutes torn off. Marlowe's final duty to Kurtz is to visit his intended and deliver Kurtz's letters and her portrait to her. When he meets her at her house, she's dressed in mourning and still greatly upset by Kurt's death. Marlowe lets it slip that he was with, her, with Kurt when he died, and the intended asks him to repeat Kurt's last words. Marlowe lies to her and says the last word he pronounced was your name. The intended states that she knew Kurt would have said such a thing and Marlowe leaves, disgusted by his lie, yet unable to prevent himself from telling it. At the end of the story, the anonymous narrator on board the Nelly then resumes his narrative. The director of companies makes an innocuous remark about the tide, and the narrator looks out at the overcast sky and the Thames, which seems to him to lead into the heart of an immense Darkness. طيب تبدا القصه مع الشخصيه الرئيسيه والمحوريه التي تدعى مارلو والذي يحلم منذ الصغر ان يتمكن من زياره العالم ثم يحقق حلمه ويعمل في شركه بلجيكيه في الكونغو في ذلك الوقت الكونغو كانت مستعمره بلجيكيه طبعا مارلو يبحر من انجلترا الى الكونغو لكي يعمل كبحار على متن السفينه التابعه للشركه البلجيكيه والتي تمتلك ثلاث محطات أو مراكز رئيسية وهي Central Station, Inner Station and Outer Station يصل مارلو إلى Outer Station ليلاحظ ال Outer Station هي المحطة الخارجية ليلاحظ أن الموظفين البيض يتعاملون مع الموظفين السود الأفارقة وكأنهم عبيد ليرى حالة البؤس والعذاب والمشقة وأن الموظفين البلجيك يسمونهم Criminals ثم يصل إلى Central Station ليعلم أن السفينة تعطلت بدون أي سبب طبعا Central Station يديرها المانجر أي المدير ليعلم أن السفينة تعطلت بدون أي سبب وأن أصلاحها يحتاج إلى ثلاثة أشهر في هذه الأثناء سيسمع كثيرا وكثيرا عن شخصية تدعى كيرتس الذي يعمل كمدير للمكتب الداخلي في الكونغو والذي يخبره المانجر في Central Station أن كيرتس هو أهم موظف عنده لأنه أكثر موظف يورد الأيفوري أي العاج للشركة 
مع العزاء تشوق للقاء كيرتس وبعد عدة شهور تم إصلاح السفينة وأبحروا إلى المحطة الداخلية الإنر ستيشن خلال هذه الفترة مارلو التقى بشخصية تدعى The Accountant أي المحاسب أعجب به بالبداية بنظافة ملبسه وأسلوبه الناضج ثم أصبح له صديقا لكن فيما بعد اتضح أنه بنفس العنصرية ونفس الأخلاق التي لا تختلف كثيرا عن البقية عندما أبحروا إلى المحطة الداخلية الانر ستيشن مارلو والمدير والعديد من الموظفين البيض الذين يسميهم مارلو بيلجرامز اي الحجاج لانهم دائما يرفعون خشب على شكل مشابه للصليب والعديد من الافارقه النيتيفز الذين يسميهم كانيبلز اي اكلي لحوم البشر تبحر السفينه وسط الغابات في الكونغو وقبل ان تصل الى الانر ستيشن يمرون على كوخ بجانبه كومه من الحطب ومكتوب وكتاب ولافتة مكتوب عليها هذا الحطب لكم لكن اقتربوا بحرص يأخذوه لأنهم بحاجة إليه لعمل السفينة التي تعمل على الفحم ثم يعترضهم ضباب كثيف تتعذر معه الرؤية وبمجرد الخروج تنهال عليهم السهام من قبائل أفريقية فيقتل قائد دفة السفينة ويتمكن مارلو من إفزاعهم وإبعادهم عن طريقه ثم يصلون إلى الانر ستيشن ليلتقي بتاجر روسي يرتدي ملابس ملونة يسميه مارلو ذي هارلكوين أي المهرج وهو نصف مجنون تقريبا هذا التاجر يتحدث عن كيرتس الكثير والكثير مما آناه كيرتس ومما مارلو بحاجة لمعرفته عندما وصلوا إلى كوخ كيرتس رأى مارلو حول الكوخ الكثير من العصي وعلى كل عصا رأس إنسان فعرف كيف كان يحصل على العاج من خلال الإبادة لكل العبيد والزنوج الذين يسميهم سافجز وكل من يقف في طريقه بمنتهى القسوة والوحشية لي... ليصل إلى استنتاج أن كيرتس هو شخصية غير سوية وشريرة وأنه ليس كما سمع عنه عندما وصلوا إلى الكوخ كان كيرتس مريض جدا فأمر المدير الأفارقة أن يخرجوه على نقالة ويأمرهم أن يضعوه وأمرهم أن يضعوه في السفينة. في أثناء ذلك تم الأفارقة حول كيرتس وانخفضوا له. طبعا يوصفهم مارلو بأنهم يعاملون كيرتس كإله. لكنه يأمرهم بالانصراف فيضعونه داخل السفينة. ولكنه في الليل يقرر الهرب ويتجه إلى داخل الغابة جهة القبائل الأفريقية. ذهب مارلو وراءه وحاول إقناعه لأن حالته الصحية سيئة جدا وينجح في ذلك. كيرتس يموت على سطح السفينة لاحقا، لكنه قبل أن يموت تكلم مع مارلو كثيرا، وأعطاه مجموعة من اليوميات وتسجيل بهدف إعطائه إلى صحفي فيما بعد لأغراض النشر، وآخر كلمة مكتوبة في تلك اليوميات هي exterminate the brutes أي أبيدوا المتوحشين. رسالة إلى البيض ليقتلوا الأفارقة في هذه الرسالة لكن فيما بعد عندما يسلم مارلو هذه الرسالة يقوم بتمزيق هذا الجزء من من اليوميات أو من التقرير وآخر كلمة يقولها كيرتس قبل وفاته هي the horror the horror أي الرعب الرعب بعد عودة كيرتس إلى براسلز يلتقي بالصحفي ويعطيه التقارير بهدف النشر ثم يقابل خطيبة كيرتس وهي فتاة ساذجة جدا كانت تظن أن كيرتس رجل طيب وصاحب أخلاق فاضلة فلم يستطع أن يصدمها بحقيقة خطيبها الشرير إلى أن نصل إلى اللحظة التي تسأل مارلو عن آخر كلمة قالها كيرتس قبل أن يموت فلم يستطع أن يخبرها بالحقيقة بل قال لها أنه نطق اسمها وفي الحقيقة أثناء الرواية وعلى مداها لم يذكر أي اسم الخطيبة سوى أنها هي الخطيبة تمام؟ وهكذا يخرج من المنزل وهو مستاء لكنه لم يستطع أن يخبرها بالحقيقة لأنها كانت حزينة جدا تنتهي القصة هنا ثم يعود القاص الغير معروف على سطح السفينة مع الشركات بالإضافة إلى الأحاديث الجانبية حول المياه و السماء المبلدة بالغيوم أو المتبلدة بالغيوم ونهر الثيمس واللذان يبدوان عندهما يشيران إلى قلب الظلام الهائل. And thank you very much 
the students. This is all what we have for today. The next lecture we will reveal the historical context, especially the European presence in Africa, the ivory trade, and the Belgian atrocities in the Congo. Till then, stay home and be safe. Goodbye.